Hello there folks, my name is Spooks, and welcome back to another episode of Box Office Chat. This is the show where I break down the top 5 domestic box office results, see where each movie landed, and see how well each movie did, so let's get started. Number 5 was Blacklight, opening to 3.5 million domestically, and that total stays the same worldwide as while it did release in some international markets, it wasn't enough to really boost the total all that much. So I'm sure many of you are confused as to what this movie is, as I was because I didn't even know this movie was coming out until a couple of weeks ago and I didn't think it was going to crack the top 5 at all due to the very poor marketing I saw for it, but apparently it caught some people's attention at the box office because it landed in the top five but it's still a very very low opening in terms of Liam Neeson action films released in the post pandemic it's right in the middle between The Marksman and Honest Thief which is good I guess but it's still not good for this movie as the budget is 43 million dollars this is a terrible start for this movie it's not going to make its budget back it looks like this is probably going to be another situation like the 355 where it'll play in theaters for a while but it'll be on demand and available to watch on blu-ray and dvd a couple weeks afterwards i obviously don't think this is going to be in the top five for very long the reviews were horrendous like we're talking redeeming love levels are terrible and the marketing was also terrible given that even i didn't know this movie was coming out so all honesty it came it opened in the top five and that's the last any of us will ever think or speak about this movie hooray Number four was Spider-Man No Way Home, making $7.5 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of $759 million and a worldwide total of $1.8 billion. So last week when I was talking about this movie, I made a mistake about where this movie was in terms of competing with Avatar. I said Avatar had $749 million and Spider-Man was at $748 million. I apologize for that blunder. Avatar made $760 million domestically. But now, at the very least, since I've done my research, I can now officially say that Spider-Man No Way Home is definitely going to surpass Avatar. It probably already has by the time this video comes out to become the third highest grossing film of all time domestically behind Avengers Endgame and Star Wars The Force Awakens. Don't think it's going to get to number two just due to how it's now easily starting to slow down and falling down the charts a bit but still what an amazing achievement to come to this milestone in the middle of a pandemic even i was a bit speculative and precautious about this movie even coming close to avatar i thought it would get at least 20 maybe even 10 million away from that total but no it damn near surpassed it and that's incredible and i do believe that this film might be able to surpass another milestone worldwide as it's just now two million away from crossing two billion dollars worldwide we'll see if the movie can get there it we've said this time and time again i know and it keeps on surpassing our expectations so i think it might have a shot at getting there don't think it's going to surpass avatar or Avengers Endgame, but I do think 2 billion given where it's at worldwide is another possibility. It will be interesting to see where this movie goes next week as Tom Holland, its big action star, has a huge tentpole movie and I think that's going to steal a large majority of this film's audience away from it. So we'll see if Spider-Man lands in the top five or falls out of it, but if this is the last week, it's in the top five it was one hell of a run my goodness the levels of success this movie had during this time in our lives where everyone is cautious and some people still haven't returned to the theater and the movie managed to make this amount of money is insane congratulations spider-man no way home you really knocked it out of the park 
again not sure if it's going to be the last week we see it in the top five but it's definitely falling down the charts right now with especially that new big tentpole movie that's guaranteed going to steal this audience away even with that it's still a huge hit and i'm so glad that it was great job Number three was Marry Me, opening to 7.9 million this weekend domestically and 16 million worldwide. So yeah, this movie had a less than stellar opening weekend. I thought given that it was Valentine's Day weekend that maybe some couples or some people would, might be interested in celebrating the holiday by seeing a new rom-com or the two leads' fans, Owen Wilson and Jennifer Lopez, who ha both have big fan bases, would probably rush out to check the two of them star in a rom-com together, but clearly not. This is a pretty low opening weekend and i'm not sure how word of mouth is going to help this out it's going to need a lot of strong legs in order to help it out however there is an asterisk to this the film is at 16 million worldwide and the budget is 23 million it's about to surpass it worldwide so unlike something like the 355 and especially moonlight Given where it's at, maybe, just maybe, with the help of the international market, I could see this movie doing fine. It could probably, well, it's definitely going to surpass its budget, but I can definitely see it uh, doubling its budget worldwide, which would be very beneficial to this. So this will be interesting to see. I'm curious to see where it goes from here. And also, once again, this was another film from Universal that followed the same footsteps as The Boss Baby Family Business and Halloween Kills, where it was simultaneously released in theaters and on Peacock, so we don't really know how the whole aspect of how well this movie did. Maybe it did better on Peacock, maybe it's doing very well. The numbers for that haven't been released yet, so I'm unaware, and maybe Valentine's Day numbers will give it a boost those numbers haven't been reported yet at the time of this recording but yeah right now marry me is off to a slow start we'll see where it goes from here number two was jackass forever making eight million this weekend adding to a domestic total of 37 million and a worldwide total of 43 million so this movie took quite a hit this weekend. It dropped 65%. Not only is that the biggest drop off out of any of the movies released in the top five, but it's also the biggest second week drop off for any of the Jackass films, including Bad Grandpa. And of course, falling 65% in your second weekend is not good. But similar similarly to and i can't believe i'm making this comparison but spider-man no way home second week drop off this isn't really affecting this film's success as thanks to this movie's relatively cheap budget of 10 million dollars it's still doing very well it's tripled its budget domestically and quadrupled it worldwide it's about to quadruple it domestically and quintuple it worldwide thanks to that cheap budget and the positive word of mouth that's helping this movie out a ton. And while I don't think it's going to match the same level of success as Jackass 3D or Bad Grandpa, I can see it lying somewhere in between the first and the second one, which once again, given its budget, is still hugely successful and immensely profitable. So while yes, this is a minor bump in the road, and I do believe that it needs to pick up the pace a bit in the coming weeks don't fret this is not a sign of dangers to come as of yet it's still doing very well it's not failing by any means necessary and it's still a certified box office success it just needs to get back on track so while yes it did take a hit it's not really affecting the film's success right now. And finally, let's end the video off with the number one movie of the weekend, and that was Death on the Nile, opening to 12 million domestically and 33 million worldwide. So while admittedly this is one of the better opening weekends for a film released by Fox, it's still 
not that good and i don't even think you can really blame the marketing here because the marketing in my opinion was actually fairly solid i saw a hefty amount of promotion for this but that's besides the point this film did not reached the same height as murder on the orient express that film opened to 28 million and this film made i believe less than half of that domestically which is rather unfortunate as well as the film apparently costing 90 million dollars this is not a good opening to be on if it had probably opened to 33 million domestically then there would be a different story but it didn't it opened worldwide which is kind of disappointing i honestly can't really say once again can't really say anything about the marketing here it was probably due to the fact that the super bowl was weak this weekend and many people probably opted to stay home or the fact that people just didn't really care for a sequel to murder on the orient express i don't think a lot of people really remember that first film a lot it hasn't really been brought up in many of the conversations i've had with people and i don't see it really being brought up in the general film scheme or it could also be the fact that reviews weren't that great they've been generally mixed and audience reactions isn't any better it got a b plus on cinema score and we talked a lot about how getting a b plus isn't as good as it sounds so word of mouth is really going to be interesting to see if it helps this movie out or doesn't i don't know it's got a lot of competition on the horizon and it's off to a very slow start so hopefully this film picks up the pace but right now death on the nile is facing rough waters and those were the top five domestic box office results for this weekend but we're not quite done yet as we've got another week ahead of us and new movies hitting theaters and this upcoming weekend is going to be interesting first off because it's president's day weekend so many people will be off that day many people will be off from work or school to celebrate the holidays so many of these movies will probably get a boost from that and the other is that we have two new major releases hitting theaters this weekend the first being dog yep that's the title so yeah this is a this is an interesting one it's a it's a dog movie obviously that's starring and directed by channing tatum i was curious to see how well this movie would turn out as soon as i saw the trailer for it because this is a weird movie to put out right now i'm not sure if people are really all interested to go rush out to a theater to see a, a movie like this a dog movie right now i don't know who the audience really is because it seems like it's trying to appeal to families but it's also pg-13 so it can't really appeal to everyone in the family and the marketing has been fine i've seen promotion for it but not to the point where i could call it solid or good in any way so it'll be interesting to see how this movie does i'm not expecting a huge opening for it in any way shape or form but i could be wrong you never know and the other big release hitting theaters this weekend is the uncharted movie this is a movie that has had a long and i mean a long production history like we're talking before five years ago it was struggling to make production happen many people were even questioning if this film would see the light of day but it seems that we were all wrong it's now officially coming out and i think this movie is probably going to have like a really solid opening weekend because the marketing has been really strong i've been seeing tons of promotion they've been really getting the word out right now and their leading man tom holland is really big right now i don't know why what did he have like a big movie that just came out like a month ago or something who knows and it's also based off of a very popular video game franchise that has received a huge fan base and critical acclaim for its very popular video game and video game movies have been doing a lot better both critically and financially with films like detective pikachu sonic the hedgehog and even the angry birds movie 2 have all been receiving critical and audience acclaim and may improving everyone's expectations over what a video game movie could and should be the only downside though is that the reviews oh boy, they are not 
kind. They're not awful or horrendous. We're not we're not in like a black light redeeming love situation, but they could be a lot better. And I think that's what's going to define this movie because word of mouth helped out films like Sonic and Detective Pikachu and even to some degree Angry Birds. It didn't do well at the box office, but it has received a kind of a cult following online. So that's really going to be the defining factor with this movie but we'll see how well this movie does as well as the rest of the movies that land in the top five on the next box office chat and that's gonna do it for this week's episode of box office chat what did you all think of the results were you satisfied unsatisfied comment down below and let me know if you like this video hit the like button if you like this channel hit the subscribe button follow me on all those social media links right there and until next time everyone stay sharp